Hey guys, today we're going to look at the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is a really, really cool effect that occurs when you have sound that is in motion. So this first slide, we have two videos that I'm going to show you. This first one is going to be a stationary source. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. As a stationary source releases a sound, as it starts making noise, that sound travels outwards from that center source point equal distances every second. So notice how neat and orderly and bullseye-ish this diagram looks. Every direction is receiving the same disturbance of wave just like every other direction. Now if the source starts moving, that's going to slightly change this diagram. So down here I'm going to go ahead and click this video and it's going to start moving from the center to the right of the screen. So as it moves, on the right hand side over here, our wave crests actually get a little bunched up. The wavelength becomes smaller because the source is moving towards that crest every second. Back here, the wavelengths are stretched out. Since the source is moving away from this direction, there's more distance in between the corresponding crests. So these two diagrams show stationary source, moving source, and they're really important because this does affect the way that we hear this noise. So what we're going to do is fill in this table. Notice I still have this diagram showing the motion of that particle, and as I fill in the table we're going to look at that diagram. So if we look back to our universal wave equation, v equals f times lambda. We can determine what happens as that source moves. The wave speed is going to be the same in both scenarios, moving towards you or away from you, because the medium is not changing. If you have a cop car or an ambulance moving towards you, the same air is touching your ears as it is touching the car. So the temperature shouldn't be different, the air density shouldn't be different, so our wave speed should be the same no matter what. If we are standing over here, the wavelength, as this object moves towards us, is actually going down. Compared to our stationary object, the wavelength is smaller as the source or the sound moves towards us. If the wavelength is going down, and we use this equation, v equals f times lambda, if lambda goes down and v has to be the same, that means our frequency has to increase. And if the frequency increases, that means the pitch also has to increase, because those two things are related. So as the object moves away from us, if we are now instead standing over here, our wavelength is increasing, these distances are bigger than when the object was stationary. And since our equation is still v equals f times lambda, if our lambda goes up, our frequency has to go down since the velocity is the same. And that means that the pitch has to go down. So what this means is that if an object is moving towards you, you should hear a higher pitched noise than normal. If it's moving away from you, you should hear a lower pitched noise as normal. If it's directly next to you, you should be hearing the true pitch. So the Doppler effect is really handy and it's something that we experience almost daily when it comes to noises being made around us. But there are also some special conditions when it comes to the Doppler effect. And some of those special conditions are shock waves and sonic booms. So in these diagrams we have three distinct things happening. This first diagram shows us a plane or a jet moving at subsonic speeds, meaning it's moving slower than the speed of sound. And we have these crests getting built up in the very, very beginning, so we hear a very high-pitched noise. And we have these stretched out crests at the end, which means behind us we would hear a low-pitched noise. This second diagram is called Mach 1. This is what happens when the jet or the plane travels the same speed as the speed of sound. Notice now we don't have a visible bunching of crests in the front. It almost creates just a solid line. And that solid line is the sound barrier. 
Now this last picture, this is what happens when you break the sound barrier. As this jet moves forward, he's emitting noises, and he emits that noise after he already moves through the position. He is traveling faster than the speed of sound, and when that occurs, look at this cone that's being created around that plane. This shot cone does two things. One, it has a buildup of air molecules inside of it, and a lot of times that's shown with water vapor. And two, it creates a sonic boom. So what happens is as this plane travels past you, you see it, you see it, you see it, and then all of a sudden you hear this noise once the plane is a great distance away. So it's traveling and you're watching it go through the sky and it passes over you and then it's down the street and you can see it, but a further distance away, then you finally hear the noise. And what we're going to do in class is I'm actually going to show you some video examples of this, only because they're really cool, not necessarily because we're going to do anything with it. Okay, so we have the idea of the Doppler effect, the changing of the perceived sound based on the speed of the object or the speed of the source, and these special cases of when this Doppler effect kind of has a cool effect, okay? But here's the important part about Doppler effect, the equation. Our unknown variables can be calculated using this equation, but it's a pretty in-depth and lengthy equation. Our perceived frequency is equal to the actual frequency times the quantity of this fraction bar thing, okay? Our speed of sound is 343 meters per second, unless it's otherwise noted differently. So you may have to do a temperature calculation involved in that point, or they may tell you the speed of sound in this case is 350 meters per second. Either way, if it does not say anything special, it is 343. The velocity of the observer, so on the top of this fraction bar, we have, and this has to be done before you can do that multiplication, so there should technically be brackets around this. We have the velocity of sound plus the velocity of the observer. Well, these two things have to be taken into consideration. This is always a plus sign, every time, no matter what. But we may plug in a plus sign or a negative sign to our velocity of the observer right here simply because it's moving. If it's moving toward the source, you keep that as a positive. If it's moving away from the source, you're going to plug in the numerical value and put a negative sign in front of it. Same for the bottom. The velocity of sound is 343 unless otherwise noted. This minus sign is always going to stay the same. But if the velocity of the source is moving towards the observer, we are going to add a plus sign in front of the numerical value of that velocity. So if it's 10 meters per second, I'm going to put plus 10 meters per second in this area. If it's moving away from the observer, I'm going to put a minus 10 meters per second in this area. And what that does is creates like a double negative. And if we have two subtractions, a subtraction sign and a minus sign, we are actually going to end up adding it. So this is going to be kind of confusing. And when we get to the practice, I will work through it with you, I promise. But understand the plus and the minus are always the same in the basic equation but you may add a positive or a negative sign value in front of the individual velocities. If they're moving towards each other, positive. If they're moving away from each other, negative. Okay, now we're gonna do an example problem to just try to get our way through this. So a trumpet player sounds a note with a frequency of 530 hertz while traveling in a convertible at 27.5 meters per second. If the car is coming towards you, what frequency would you hear? So in this example, you are going to be stationary. So we have the equation, the perceived frequency is equal to the actual frequency times the velocity of sound plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sound minus the velocity of the source. So I have 
actual frequency is 530. I have velocity of the source is 27.5. Velocity of the observer is zero. So the perceived frequency is 530, 343 plus zero over 343 minus, and now I'm going to plug in that plus 27.5 because that source is moving towards me or towards the observer. So I'm going to put in a plus 27.5 in that little area. So the perceived frequency is 530, 343 over 315.5. So the pre perceived frequency is 530 times 1.087. So the perceived frequency is 576.11 hertz. Now let's think that through. As the source moves towards our observer, the wave crests are bunching up together. So the wavelength goes down so the frequency goes up. So here, our frequency went up, so that's kind of a quick check to make sure we did our math properly. So the perceived frequency of this trumpet player as he travels towards you in the convertible is 576.11 hertz. Okay, this is gonna be the next big thing that we practice with. We're going to do a couple worksheets, we're gonna do some labs, we're going to be using this for quite a while. So come in with questions, I wanna make sure that I can help you through, and I will see you tomorrow in class.